Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. For the last 25 years, the Orleans County Citizen Advocacy have been helping serve the needs of people in Orleans County with special needs. Today's guest is Mary Harney, the coordinator of the program. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Scott. So, um, it seems like I've, you know, 25 years, that's gone by really fast because um, in some form or another, I've, I've either written about you folks or I've had you on my radio shows, but 25 years, uh, that's a long time. It is. We've been around for a long time. Um, during that time, we have uh, created and supported over 80 matches. Right. Now, when I think of uh, like mental health, as in uh, social services, I think of buildings, I think of buildings, like uh, one of our mental health facilities, just, uh, they just like built this glamorous new building. Do you actually have a building even? We actually do. In this past year, um, we actually uh, have our first real office space. But it, um, it probably doesn't look like that. No, it, it's not quite as grand. Right. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, is you do operate a bare bones program. It's a very grassroots program, right. yes. Yeah, because uh, your, your interest is on the people. Yes. Right. Um, so explain a little bit. I know uh, bits and pieces about your program because, as I've said, as I've written about it, and I've had you on the radio show uh, with other people. Uh, but explain to the viewers what your program is about. Well, our program um, generally, we take uh, volunteers from the community and we match them up with folks with developmental disabilities. Right. Um, a huge part of uh, uh, the folks that we're involved with are eligible for other services for various reasons. Um, you know, uh, we have very loose criteria as far as that really. The only criteria is that someone had to have their disability, we use the federal guidelines mm -hmm. for that, had to have their disabil disability prior to the age of 21. And really that's the only criteria. I mean, it doesn't, um, they don't have to meet um, you know, uh, economic hardship. They don't have to meet, you know, and you know, like, I mean, it used to be that people were funded because they needed job supports or people were funded because they needed, um, you know, uh, medical oversight, you know, and our advocates do many of those types of things. Um, but, um, they just, uh, it's, you know, on, a, um, it's on, a the, the person, you know, the person with the di di disability um, is who dictates what the problem is that they mm -hmm. would like some help with, mm -hmm. and then we try to help them overcome that issue. Right. So then the, you match them up with somebody in the community, and that person is actually volunteering his or her time, correct? Yeah. And uh, why is it important that that person volunteers their time versus being paid? Um, again, uh, you know, the, the, I think that the minute a lot of times, first of all, when you get into a paid relationship, then that's where, um, it's, the funding becomes very, you know, uh, very regimen. You have to have a need for X amount of hours of job support or, you know, there's all these criteria that you have to meet with our folks then. The matches dictate between each other, right. you know, um, what the relationship is going to be and how much time is going to be involved in it. We try to match people up um, with similar interests right. um, in similar areas. Right. And uh, a lot of times it's social stuff, but sometimes, um, you know, uh, one of our pairs, uh, the gentleman needed to figure out how to get a ramp built so he could access his house and you know the advocate was uh, instrumental in helping put that resource together and the organization helps to find those resources so right. that the advocate can do that work right and I think uh, I think probably the other reason that it's good that money doesn't pass hands is because you're trying to form friendships and you know although I do have some friends in my life who think they ought to be paid to be my friend in, in reality <laughs> You know, when we have a friend, it isn't no money's t 
typically pass hands. Yep. It's just being friends, and that's what you're trying to create with these relationships. Truly, and and you know, um, uh, again, you know, these relationships sometimes they uh, sometimes they can be shorter, but. You know, one of our uh, longest matches is 25 years old. Our organization is 25 right. years old, and um, you know, and that, the advocate involved is 90 years old and still um, involved with that's their an, match. That's so. interesting. Uh, 90 years old, and she's been involved with it for 25 years. Yeah. Um, how did your like? I think we, we were talking before, and that uh, one of the founders was. Joan Alexander. Yes, she was, uh, you know, at very much at the beginning, um, uh, and uh, Connie Daigle was also um, one of the founders. Do you know how it came about? Well, citizen advocacy back in like the late '80s, um, as you know, a large part of the state was deinstitutionalizing. Then mm. citizen advocacy sprang up, um, and there was groups all across. You know the state um, all across a, a lot of states and even into Australia and stuff like that and there was some federal funding for these groups um, our particular group was I believe the last group to join the citizen advocacy movement and I believe we're the only remaining um, group in the whole state yeah, that's what I understand is there there were others throughout the state but they just over the passage of time, they've disappeared. How come, why do you think your group is so successful? Um, I think that the group has, has managed to survive because it was, you know, the, the founding people were so driven, mm -hmm. you know, to make it survive. Um, you know, uh, it's a very active working board. Um, the people that were involved in it were uh, very dedicated. Um, and there's a lot of need for it up in this area, you know, be, because, you know, of our uh, demographics, we're kind of isolated in general for a lot of reasons. So, um, you know, I think that the, um, the need was, was fairly great, you know. And, and what happened in a lot of the bigger cities is that those monies, they just went to other places. Mm -hmm. um, but up here then, you know... Um, and is it getting to be more important? Because there's, you know, it doesn't uh, take any more than turning on the radio, turning on the TV, or reading the uh, pages of a newspaper to realize that there have been budget cuts, in, especially with people who have special needs. So does this help at least fill some of the void? I believe it does. And, um, you know, we're seeing a, a resurgence, especially... Uh, a lot of kids that are graduating out of uh, programs in the schools and stuff at 21, then they may go forth with no services going forth. And so some of our advocates have uh, just paired up for even short periods of time to kind of help make that transition from school to community. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, they may continue um, on. Like, I mean, again, these relationships are the same as our relationships. Some of the relationships are via email, via phone, via Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's all the, you know, actual person-to-person -person interaction too, so. I think you touched upon one thing that's very important is when you or I probably graduated from high school, we were uh, chomping at the bit to get out. But I have noticed that people with special needs a lot of times, you know, they can stay in school until, what, they're 21? It's actually a fairly traumatic thing for them because that is their social network and uh, I have found that a lot of them just they they have a hard time of letting go and it appears that maybe when you're dealing with somebody from that age group you might be able to help transition them mm -hmm. yeah and especially I mean I think that what happens is that you know um, in the base ca in the best case scenario, a person graduating has a really good um, support network with their family. Mm -hmm. But even in those cases, sometimes uh, kids they don't want their families helping right. them transition into the new social network or you know transition into you know finding some employment, um, those types of things. And so sometimes that's one of the places. Um, 
that you know an advocate can help out with. Right. Do you think, uh, although your group is doing a lot of great things, do you think uh, we do pretty good as a community as a whole? Because I think about when I was growing up, some of the the characters I can think of who um, who were out there, you know, on the streets. They had homes, but they they were people who had some issues and. A lot of people helped them, but they didn't call it help, and they just, you know, called, you know, just doing what you, you know, doing what was right. Um, do you think that still occurs? Just do you think there's a lot of just good-hearted people <clears throat> who still help? I think that that's really the premise of how citizen advocacy right. came to be. Right. Um, is about being neighborly, right. but. Then we went over to more of a paid for service model. Right. And so sometimes people um, begin to think that that need isn't as great because there are these service providers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but for somebody not to know their neighbor or somebody not to just have a friend in the community, mm -hmm. um, first of all, that, that's, that's kind of rough and kind of scary. But then again, we're into this time where services are being, you know, more and more uh, cut, and so the need is growing again. So I, th I think that there's going to be um, more of a resurgence of of this need. Right. You know, like things kind of, you know, fluctuate right. over time, anyways. But um, it seems like we're going back into a trend of that. Um, there's more need. Right. So how how are you funded? Because you you do have some basic costs. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you funded? Any um, federal money? None. Nope, none. Uh, we are funded about forty percent of our funding is through town appropriations, um, and then the other sixty percent of our money is raised through us through uh, fundraiser fundraisers. Uh, and donations and such as that. I mean, uh, we rely very heavily on our fundraisers. The one fundraiser I think of when I think of your group, uh, having been a runner in my previous chapter of a previous chapter of my life, and having two sons who are avid runners, is your Echo Lake Road Race. You can't because that's that's turned into one of the uh, the premier races every year that people look forward to. Uh, you have a lot of prizes, but more important, I think, for the runners and the bikers is you have a great course. You're running around Echo Lake. Uh, when is that? It is actually coming up on the 24th of August. This will be our 21st mm -hmm. uh, Echo Lake Road Race. Right. I uh, believe I have, uh, I've never run it, but I have biked it, and I live to tell about it. It's a nice, uh, what, it was a five mile loop? Uh, the, you can either bike 10 miles, you can run five or 10 miles, right. or you can walk five miles. So if you do the 10 miles, it's twice around the lake. Right, and if I recall right, it's all dirt, isn't it? Yes. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great loop. Uh, you know, it, it might be five miles to get around, but it's a, um, you know, you have, your different groups, as you know, you have your real competitive runners like my sons, but then you have your leisure runners, but then then you have this other group. They're not quite walkers, but uh, I, they're speed walkers. My father is always, he's taken part in your your uh, race for years. and But then you have the walkers who are just walking. They're having mm -hmm. a good time, they're gabbing. And so, so it's really for any, but well, anybody within reason. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that's one of the interesting things that I think about it is that it's really a wide variance in the age from very young to very old. So it's really become um, a family event. Right. You know, I can think of a couple, I, I think of some of the unique people I've seen there. I, I don't know them by name, but there used to be this old preacher man who was in his 70s or 80s. And uh, oh, I think he was in his 80s, and uh, I believe he was from Connecticut, a seasonal resident up here. He he didn't look like he was in great shape, but he ran all kinds of races. And then there was another fellow who used to run it. He looked like he was going to fall over, but his he ran it. And his story was that he'd spent years in a wheelchair, managed to pull himself out of the wheelchair, and he would go there and run that race. So. Uh, 
you know, you don't have to be super athletic athletic to do that right it's i mean you know some again as you say some of the people are very competitive right um but i think a lot of people just go there for fun and it's an annual event people will see each other every year at it we had a a couple that ran it uh as part of their wedding party you know so their whole wedding party ran it and it was one of those years where it was incredibly muddy and so it was a very muddy wedding party right. Has that uh, has it grown over the years, or has it? Because I know for a while it was really growing. Has it leveled off, or? Um, it it varies. I mean, it's still very well attended, um, but like most events, you know, I mean, things change a little bit. Um, so I mean, it, it's still pretty stable, but there's always room for growth. Right. And then you have another event coming up. Right. Right behind it is uh, our. It's called the Northeast Kingdom. Lake Century Tour, or we just call it the Century Tour, um, and this will actually be our 16th year of doing mm. that, and that's exclusively a bike tour, um, non-race. Um, it's it's more leisurely, but uh, again, the people that bike in it are pretty serious about now, it. Now how long is that? Um, people can either ride 25 miles, 50 miles, 75 miles, or 100 miles. Well. <laughs> I'll probably, I could probably do the 25 or 50. Well, as for the 100, I think I'll uh, pass on that. Um, so why is it important that people support these events? Um, well, again, these events make it so that we can continue to survive and continue to provide the services that we provide. Um, and the events are important. I mean, a lot of our folks will... Uh, do volunteer work at all these events so um you know they're out and about doing this stuff one of our guys actually bikes in it i believe he does the 50 mile loop right um you know uh so yeah i mean it's just uh it, it's important so that we can continue to right. be and it and it it's also i mean in addition to the revenue it's some of it is uh public relations, it's to remind right. people that we're still there, that there's still the need, you know, mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, some of our runners or walkers have turned into advocates or right. board members or committee members. Right. And I think it's, I think people like to know the fact that the money isn't being used to support like ivory towers or something, because uh, I think that's why, now from my observations, of going to town, various town meetings, because I have been to various ones. Most towns are very generous to you um, at town meetings. Yes, time. very much so. We're, the towns are very good about supporting us. Um, but, you know, again, the the money definitely stays local because, right. you know, we only service people within um, Orleans County. So um, it seems to me like you could get funding, state and federal funding, but Along with that, often comes little strings that you just probably don't want to deal with. Then we have all those criteria that we have to meet of, you know, that the person has this need, and so we're allowed to give them this many hours of service. Right. And yeah, we just a long time ago decided that we didn't, it, you know, it, it, it didn't fit within our model right. to have those types of strings attached. And this isn't so much of work and needs for the the person it's also just to have some kind of connection to the yeah the world yeah by all means i mean um it's the same premise of that you know you can put somebody in the community but that doesn't necessarily make them part of the community i always say that you know we're kind of the bridge sometimes you know because sometimes it's as simple as someone um you know, like even you or I might not want to go to an event and go to it alone, right. you know, because and then, you know, if you add a disability into that, then then, <clears throat> you know, the hesitancy and the, the fear of, you know, just going out there and putting and, and sometimes it's as simple as people don't have transportation, right? you know, to get to things, you know, um, so. You know, that's important. You know, we we probably the the biggest um, role that we fill is to help um, help people with isolation. Right, because yeah, uh, you know if you don't if you don't have a license, and particularly if you don't live in a community center, 
you know, the world can uh, be a real isolating place. Yeah. So, now, what's the deal here <coughs> that I can win a luxury vacation? That Yes, that's going to be, uh, that's our newest uh, fundraiser. It's going on this whole year. The um, raffle will actually take place uh, in January of 2014. Um, the name of the place is Villa del Palmar. It's in Cabo San Lucas. Um, Mexico and at each one of our four events that we have throughout the year we're offering 30 tickets um, and then the leftover ones will will be offered at the end but there's only going to be 150 tickets mm -hmm. um, and it's a week at this five-star resort um, you know and uh, uh, you know, there's snorkeling and scuba diving and swimming with the dolphins. So I suppose the coordinator is, she can't win it. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I buy a ticket. <laughs> that's the key to it all. So, um, you know, so that that's uh, that's ongoing. And this is our first year doing that. Right. And did, did any group come forward to help you out with this? Or did, uh, did you... Uh, with... Uh, Someone uh, actually uh, donated the vacation yeah. to our organization, mm. so uh, it's ours now. Right. Now, let's uh, back up a little bit. So how did you get involved with this organization? Um, I have a long history um, in mental health. I have been involved in mental health in some degree or other for probably 28 years now. Um, oh, typically working for um, forest service provider, right. you know, for one of the big uh, mental health organizations. Um, and then I moved up into this area up here. Right. And uh, um, I just, I, I, this is just a little, um, I mean, again, uh, our organization only has two part-time employees. Right. There's an executive director and there's myself. Right. Um, and my total job consists of, uh, you know, uh, finding advocates, making matches, uh, the referrals coming in, and then supporting and trying to find resources for those people. And so um, in my previous life, um, I had done case management and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was just kind of a natural um, slide into this particular position. So have have you? Do you find it fulfilling yourself? Very much so. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I mean, um, it's always you know been a passion of mine. I just I love people, and um, I've had the opportunity to meet so many um, wonderful and interesting people. Right. And uh, you know just um, you know we're we're really working on um, right. becoming, we, again, we had always been very grassroots, right. and we're really striving to become right. more of a tight-knit organization right. type of thing. So, And I know uh, it really was built on uh, real community spirit, because as we were talking about Joan Alexander and Connie Daigle, who I know both of them, and uh, they're just, they're great people, and I know there were other people also involved, but I know them, and they're just outstanding. They're both with the organization still. They're still connected. Yep, by all means, uh, you know, uh, Connie still volunteers at a lot of our events, and um, you know, Joan is still involved with us also, and gives us great ideas. And mm. um, yeah, I mean, you know, that that that's that's kind of our fear, though, is that you know, a lot of our original uh, founding mm. people. Are getting older, right. and so you know now we have to cultivate some new young. Right. Um, How has that worked? Ha have you uh, gotten new younger people? We are. We definitely are. Um, I mean, we're always recruiting, and uh, you know, I go out and give a lot of presentations, and uh, uh, we have a new executive director that's Deborah Zimmer Zimmerman, okay. and uh, she has a lot of experience. Uh, you know, and community development and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, she's doing a lot with that. And, uh, you know, we're working, uh, we're trying to work some with youth and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, to because that's the next generation of, um, you know, of, of community volunteers, we hope. Now, uh, you only have a few more minutes left. What more would you like the viewers to know about your program, to know about any events? <coughs> um, just again, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, 
opportunity for people, you know, first of all, I mean, I hope some people come out and attend these events, you know, uh, both events, you know, uh, you know, we've been told over and over that, you know, there people have a lot of fun there, you know, uh, Century, you know, we have like some fantastic food, like at mm -hmm. the conclusion of the bike thing, there's a huge barbecue um, all throughout the thing, there's all different food stops and, you know, uh, like at the Sheffield yeah. uh, Potato Barn, they do a potato, baked potato buffet, and so there's, you know, all kinds of novel things mm -hmm. along the route. Um, but, you know, there's just always, we, we need people, you know, in order to go forward, we always need people. We need people to be advocates, but we need people, you know, to be on committees. We right. need people to be on the board. I mean, and, and it doesn't have to be a huge commitment of time. I mean, somebody that really likes to cook you know, might be able to help us with some, you know, baking, or right. somebody that has an artistic flair mm -hmm. might help us design posters, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's really varied and, and dictated by the person and what they're able to give, but it's just important um, for people to give because it really does shape the community. You know, I haven't been to your uh, Echo Lake race for a few years just because of our schedule, but back when we used to go, area businesses came out in droves to support it they there was there was a uh, uh prizes galore now so area businesses seem to come on board too very much so i mean and we are still supported very well by the local business community um and you know and this year again we'll have a lot of prizes you know um at echo we do the raffle afterwards um you know and, and again people support us well for a century too Okay, uh, if somebody wants to contact you, how how can they contact you? And the the viewers will see the contact information on the screen. Um, so the um, I brought this in, and you can post that afterwards too. But uh, our office is at at fifty five Seymour Lane, um, and we're in Suite eighteen. And um, uh, so that's one way to contact us. The phone number there is six two four zero eight seven seven. Um, you can register for Echo or Century at active.com or else you can download the registration forms um, from uh, www.occa-vermont.org. Right. Um, and uh, I guess that's about it, you know. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for coming on the show and thank you for all your good works because, as I said, I've been... Uh, I've known about your group now for almost the almost the entire 25 years, so you're out there and you're still going. We are. So. We hope to go for at least another 25. Okay, and uh, are, will you come back in 25 years and uh, update us? Certainly. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice. Mm -hmm.